Chapters 9 through 12 of the Gospel according to Luke. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Gospel according to Luke from the New Testament in Modern Speech. Translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Chapters 9 through 12. Chapter 9. Then, calling the twelve together, he conferred on them power and authority over all the demons and to cure diseases, and sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to cure the sick. And he commanded them, Take nothing for your journey, neither stick nor bag, nor bread nor money, and do not have an extra undergarment. Whatever house you enter, make that your home, and from it start afresh. Wherever they refuse to receive you, as you leave that town, shake off the very dust from your feet as a protest against them. So they departed and visited village after village, spreading the good news and performing cures everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard of all that was going on, and he was bewildered because of its being said by some that John had come back to life, by others that Elijah had appeared, and by others that some one of the ancient prophets had come back to life. And Herod said, John I have beheaded, but who is this of whom I hear such reports? And he sought for an opportunity of seeing Jesus. The apostles, on their return, related to Jesus all they had done. Then he took them and withdrew to a quiet retreat, to a town called Bethsaida. But the immense crowd, aware of this, followed him, and receiving them kindly, he proceeded to speak to them of the kingdom of God, and those who needed to be restored to health he cured. Now when the day began to decline, the twelve came to him and said, Send the people away, that they may go to the villages and farms round about, and find lodging and a supply of food, because here we are in an uninhabited district. You yourselves, he said, must give them food. <laughs> we have nothing, they replied, but five loaves and a couple of fish, unless indeed we were to go and buy provisions for all this host of people. For there were about five thousand adult men. But he said to his disciples, Make them sit down in parties of about fifty each. They did so, making them all without exception sit down. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed them, and broke them into portions, which he gave to the disciples to distribute to the people. So they ate and were fully satisfied, all of them. And what they had remaining over was gathered up, twelve baskets of fragments. One day, when he was praying by himself, the disciples were present, and he asked them, Who do the people say that I am? John the Baptist, they replied. But others say Elijah, and others that some one of the ancient prophets has come back to life. But you, he asked, who do you say that I am? God's anointed one, replied Peter. And Jesus strictly forbade them to tell this to anyone. And he said, The Son of Man must suffer much cruelty, be rejected by the elders and high priests and scribes, and be put to death, and on the third day be raised to life again. And he said to all, if any one is desirous of following me, let him ignore self and take up his cross day by day, and so be my follower. For whoever desires to save his life shall lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake shall save it. Why, what benefit is it to a man to have gained the whole world, but to have lost or forfeited his own self? For whoever shall have been ashamed of me and my teachings, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own and the Father's glory, and in that of the holy angels. I tell you truly that there are some of those who stand here who will certainly not taste death till they have seen the kingdom of God. It was about eight days after this that Jesus, taking with him Peter, John, and James, went up the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face underwent a change, and his clothing became white and radiant. And suddenly there were two men conversing with him, who were Moses and Elijah. They came in glory, and kept speaking about his death, which he was so soon to undergo in Jerusalem. Now Peter and the others were weighed down with sleep, but, keeping themselves awake all through, 
they saw his glory, and the two men standing with him. And when they were preparing to depart from him, Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, we are thankful to you that we are here. Let us put up three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. But while he was thus speaking, there came a cloud which spread over them, and they were awestruck when they had entered into the cloud. Then there came a voice from within the cloud, This is my son, my chosen one, listen to him. After this voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They kept it to themselves, and said not a word to anyone at that time about what they had seen. On the following day, when they were come down from the mountain, a great crowd came to meet him, and a man from the crowd called out, Rabbi, I beg you to pity my son, for he is my only child. At times a spirit seizes him, and he suddenly cries out. It convulses him, and makes him foam at the mouth, and does not leave him till it has well nigh covered him with bruises. I entreated your disciples to expel the spirit, but they could not. O oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, replied Jesus, how long shall I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here to me. Now while the youth was coming, the spirit dashed him to the ground and cruelly convulsed him. But Jesus rebuked the foul spirit and cured the youth and gave him back to his father. And all were awestruck at the mighty power of God. And while everyone was expressing wonder at all that he was doing, he said to his disciples, As for you, store these my sayings in your memory, for, before long, the Son of Man will be betrayed into the hands of men. But they did not understand his meaning. It was veiled from them that they might not perceive it, and they were afraid to ask him about it. Now there arose a dispute among them which of them was to be the greatest. And Jesus, knowing the reasoning that was in their hearts, took a young child and made him stand by his side, and said to him, Whoever for my sake receives this little child receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. For the lowliest among you all, he is the greatest. Rabbi, replied John, we have seen a man making use of your name to expel demons, and we forbade him, because he does not come with us. Do not forbid him, said Jesus, for he who is not against you is on your side. Now when the time drew near for him to be received up again into heaven, he proceeded with fixed purpose towards Jerusalem, and sent messengers before him. They went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but the people there would not receive him, because he was evidently going to Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they said, Master! Do you wish us to order fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them, and they went to another village. And as they proceeded on their way, a man came to him and said, I will follow you wherever you go. The foxes have holes, said Jesus, and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Follow me, he said to another. Master, the man replied, Allow me first to go and bury my father. Leave the dead, Jesus rejoined, to bury their own dead. But you must go and announce far and wide the coming of the kingdom of God. Master, said yet another, I will follow you, but allow me first to go and say goodbye to my friends at home. Jesus answered him, No one who has put his hand to the plough and then looks behind him is fit for the kingdom of God. Chapter 10 After this the Lord appointed seventy others, and sent them before him by twos, to go to every town or place which he himself intended to visit. And he addressed them thus, The harvest is abundant, but the reapers are few. Therefore entreat the owner of the harvest to send out more reapers into his fields, and now go. Remember that I am sending you out as lambs into the midst of wolves, Carry no purse, bag, nor change of shoes, and salute no one on your way. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house! And if there is a lover of peace there, your peace shall rest upon it, otherwise come back upon you. And in that same house stay, eating and drinking at their table. 
for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not move from one house to another. And whatever town you come to and they receive you, eat what they put before you. Cure the sick in that town and tell them, The kingdom of God is now at your door. But whatever town you come to and they will not receive you, go out into the broader streets and say, The very dust of your town that hangs about us we wipe off as a protest. Only be sure of this, that the kingdom of God is close at hand. I tell you that it will be more endurable for Sodom on the great day than for that town. Alas for thee, Chorazin! Alas for thee, Bethsaida! For had the miracles been performed in Tyre and Sidon which have been performed in you, long ere now they would have repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. However, for Tyre and Sidon it will be more endurable at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, shalt thou be lifted high as heaven? Thou shalt be driven down as low as Hades. He who listens to you listens to me, and he who disregards you disregards me, and he who disregards me disregards him who sent me. When the seventy returned, they exclaimed joyfully, Master, even the demons submit to us when we utter your name. I saw Satan fall like a lightning flash out of heaven, he replied. I have given you power to tread serpents and scorpions underfoot, and to trample on all the power of the enemy, and in no case shall anything do you harm. Nevertheless, rejoice not at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are registered in heaven. On that same occasion, Jesus was filled by the Holy Spirit with rapturous joy. I give thee fervent thanks, he exclaimed. O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hidden these things from sages and men of understanding, and hast revealed them to babes. Yes, Father, for such has been thy gracious will. All things are delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is but the Father, nor who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son may choose to reveal him. And he turned towards his disciples, and said to them apart, Blessed are the eyes which see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see the things you see, and have not seen them, and to hear the things you hear, and have not heard them. Then an expounder of the law stood up to test him with a question. Rabbi, he asked, what shall I do to inherit the life of the ages? Go to the law, said Jesus. What is written there? How does it read? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, he replied, with thy whole heart, thy whole soul, thy whole strength, and thy whole mind, and thy fellow man as much as thyself. A right answer, said Jesus. Do that, and you shall live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said, But what is meant by my fellow man? Jesus replied, a man was once on his way down from Jerusalem to Jericho, when he fell among robbers, who after both stripping and beating him went away, leaving him half dead. Now a priest happened to be going down that way, and on seeing him passed by on the other side. In like manner a Levite also came to the place, and seeing him passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, being on a journey, came where he lay, and seeing him, was moved with pity. He went to him and dressed his wounds with oil and wine and bound them up. Then, placing him on his own mule, he brought him to an inn, where he bestowed every care on him. The next day he took out two shillings and gave them to the innkeeper. Take care of him, he said, and whatever further expense you are put to, I will repay it to you at my next visit. Which of those three seems to you to have acted like a fellow man to him who fell among the robbers? the one who showed him pity he replied go said jesus and act in the same way as they pursued their journey he came to a certain village where a woman named martha welcomed him to her house she had a sister called mary who seated herself at the lord's feet and listened to his teaching martha meanwhile was busy and distracted in waiting at table and she came and said Master, do you not care that my sister is leaving me to do all the waiting? Tell her to assist me. Martha, Martha, replied Jesus, 
you are anxious and worried about a multitude of things. And yet only one thing is really necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, and she shall not be deprived of it. Chapter 11 At one place where he was praying, when he rose from his knees, one of his disciples said to him, Master, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. So he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, may thy name be kept holy. Let thy kingdom come. Give us day after day our bread for the day. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive every one who fails in his duty to us. And bring us not into temptation. And he said to them, which of you shall have a friend, and shall go to him in the middle of the night, and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has just come to my house from a distance, and I have nothing for him to eat? And he from indoors shall answer, Do not pester me. The door is now barred, and I am here in bed with my children. I cannot get up and give you bread. I tell you that even if he will not rise and give him the loaves, because he is his friend, at any rate, because of his persistency, he will rouse himself and give him as many as he requires. So I say to you, ask, and what you ask for shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened to you. For every one who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks the door shall be opened. And what father is there among you who, if his son asks for a slice of bread, will offer him a stone, or if he asks for a fish, will instead of a fish offer him a snake, or if he asks for an egg, will offer him a scorpion? If you then, with all your human frailty, know how to give your children gifts that are good for them, how much more certainly will your Father who is in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? On one occasion he was expelling a dumb demon, and when the demon was gone out, the dumb man could speak, and the people were astonished. But some among them said, It is by the power of Beelzebul, the prince of the demons, that he expels the demons. Others, to put him to the test, asked him for a sign in the sky, and, knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Every kingdom in which civil war rages goes to ruin, family attacks family, and is overthrown. And if Satan really has engaged in fierce conflict with himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because you say that I expel demons by the power of Baalzebul. And if it is by the power of Baalzebul that I expel the demons, by whom do your disciples expel them? They, therefore, shall be your judges. But if it is by the power of God that I drive out the demons, it is evident that the kingdom of God has come upon you. Whenever a strong man, fully armed and equipped, is guarding his own castle, he enjoys peaceful possession of his property. But as soon as another stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away that complete armor of his in which he trusted, and distributes the plunder he has collected. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever is not gathering with me is scattering abroad. When a foul spirit has left a man, it roams about in the desert, seeking a resting place. But, unable to find any, it says, I will return to the house I have left. And when it comes, it finds the house swept clean and in good order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits more malignant than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And in the end that man's condition becomes worse than it was at first. As he thus spoke, a woman in the crowd called out in a loud voice, Blessed is the mother who carried you, and the breasts that you have sucked. Nay, rather, he replied, they are blessed who hear God's message, and carefully keep it. Now when the crowds came thronging upon him, he proceeded to say, The present generation is a wicked generation. It requires some sign, but no sign shall be given to it except that of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the men of Nineveh, so the Son of Man will be a token to the present generation. 
the queen of the south will awake at the judgment together with the men of the present generation and will condemn them because she came from the extremity of the earth to hear the wisdom of solomon but mark one greater than solomon is here there will stand up men of nineveh at the judgment together with the present generation and will condemn it because they repented at the preaching of jonah and mark one greater than jonah is here when any one lights a lamp he never puts it in the cellar or under the bushel but on the lampstand that people who come in may see the light the lamp of the body is the eye when your eyesight is good your whole body also is lighted up but when it is defective your body is darkened consider therefore whether the light that is in you is anything but mere darkness if however your whole body is penetrated with light and has no part dark it will be so lighted all of it as when the lamp with its bright shining gives you light when he had thus spoken a pharisee invited him to breakfast at his house so he entered and took his place at table now the pharisee saw to his surprise that he did not wash his hands before breakfasting the master however said to him here we see how you pharisees clean the outside of the cup or plate while your secret hearts are full of greed and selfishness foolish men did not he who made the outside make the inside also but as to what is within give alms and instantly all is clean in you but alas for you pharisees for you pay tithes on your mint and rue and every kind of garden vegetable and are indifferent to justice and the love of god these are the things you ought to have attended to while not neglecting the others alas for you pharisees for you love the best seats in the synagogues and you liked to be bowed to in places of public resort alas for you for you are like the tombs which lie hidden and the people who walk over them are not aware of their existence hereupon one of the expounders of the law exclaimed rabbi in saying such things you reproach us also alas too for you expounders of the law replied jesus for you load men with cumbrous burdens which you yourselves will not touch with one of your fingers alas for you for you repair the tombs of the prophets whom your forefathers killed it follows that you bear testimony to the actions of your forefathers and that you fully approve thereof they slew you build for this reason also the wisdom of god has said i will send prophets and apostles to them of whom they will kill some and persecute others so that the blood of all the prophets that is being shed from the creation of the world onwards may be required from the present generation yes i tell you that from the blood of abel down to the blood of zechariah who perished between the altar and the house it shall all be required from the present generation alas for you expounders of the law for you have taken away the key of knowledge you yourselves have not entered and those who wanted to enter you have hindered after he had left the house the scribes and pharisees commenced a vehement attempt to entangle him and make him give off-hand answers on numerous points lying in wait to catch some unguarded expression from his lips chapter twelve meanwhile the people had come streaming towards him by tens of thousands so that they were trampling one another underfoot and now he proceeded to say to his disciples first beware of the yeast of the pharisees that is to say beware of hypocrisy there is nothing that is covered up which will not be uncovered nor hidden which will not become known whatever therefore you have said in the dark will be heard in the light and what you have whispered within closed doors will be proclaimed from the housetops but to you who are my friends i say be not afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do nothing further i will warn you whom to fear fear him who after killing has power to throw into gehenna yes i say to you fear him are not five sparrows sold for a penny and yet not one of them is a thing forgotten in god's sight but the very hairs on your heads are all counted away with fear you are more precious than a multitude of sparrows 
And I tell you that every man who shall have acknowledged me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. But he who disowns me before men will be disowned before the angels of God. Moreover, everyone who shall speak against the Son of Man may obtain forgiveness. But he who blasphemes the Holy Spirit will never obtain forgiveness. And when they are bringing you before synagogues and magistrates and governors, do not anxiously ponder the manner or matter of your defense, nor what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit shall teach you at that very moment what you must say. Just then a man in the crowd appealed to him. Rabbi, he said, tell my brother to give me a share of the inheritance. Man, he replied, who has constituted me a judge or arbitrator over you? And to the people he said, Take care, be on your guard against all covetousness, for no one's life consists in the superabundance of his possessions. And he spoke a parable to them. A certain rich man's lands, he said, yielded abundant crops, and he debated within himself, saying, What am I to do, for I have no place in which to store my crops? And he said to himself, this is what I will do. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and in them I will store up all my harvest and my wealth. And I will say to my life, Life, you have ample possessions laid up for many years to come. Take your ease, eat, drink, enjoy yourself. But God said to him, Foolish man, this night your life is demanded from you, and these preparations, for whom shall they be? So is it with him who amasses treasure for himself, but has no riches in God. Then, turning to his disciples, he said, For this reason I say to you, dismiss all anxious care for your lives, inquiring what you are to eat, and for your bodies what you are to put on. For life is a greater gift than food, and the body is a greater gift than clothing. Observe the ravens. They neither sow nor reap, and have neither store chamber nor barn, and yet God feeds them. How far more precious are you than the birds? And which of you is able by anxious thought to add a moment to his life? If then you are unable to do even a very little thing, why be over-anxious about other matters? Observe the lilies, how they grow. They neither labor nor spin. And yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was as beautifully dressed as one of these. But if God so clothes the vegetation in the fields, that blooms today and tomorrow will be thrown into the oven, how much more certainly will he clothe you, you men of feeble faith? Therefore do not be asking what you are to eat, nor what you are to drink, and do not waver between hope and fear. For though the nations of the world pursue these things, as for you, your father knows that you need them. But make his kingdom the object of your pursuit, and these things shall be given you in addition. Dismiss your fears, little flock. Your father finds a pleasure in giving you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Provide yourselves with purses that will never wear out, a treasure inexhaustible in heaven, where no thief can come nor moth consume. For where your wealth is stored, there also will your heart be. Have your girdles on, and let your lamps be alight, and be yourselves like men waiting for their master, on the lookout till he shall return from the wedding feast, that, when he comes and knocks, they may open the door instantly. Blessed are those servants whom their master, when he comes, shall find on the watch. I tell you in solemn truth, that he will tie an apron round him, and will bid them recline at table while he comes and waits on them and whether it be in the second watch or in the third that he comes and finds them so, blessed are they. Of this be sure, that if the master of the house had known what time the robber was coming, he would have kept awake and not have allowed his house to be broken into. Be you also ready, for at an hour when you are not expecting him, the Son of Man will come. Master, said Peter, are you addressing this parable to us or to all alike? Who then? replied the Lord, is the faithful and intelligent steward whom his master will put in charge of his household to serve out their rations at the proper times. Blessed is that servant whom his master when he comes shall find so doing. I tell you truly that he will put him in authority over all his possessions. But if that servant should say in his heart, My master is a long time in coming, 
and should begin to beat the men-servants and the maids, and to eat and drink, drinking even to excess, that servant's master will come on a day when he is not expecting him, and at an hour that he knows not of, and will punish him severely, and make him share the lot of the unfaithful. And that servant who has been told his master's will, and yet made no preparation, and did not obey his will, will receive many lashes. But he who had not been told it, and yet did what deserved the scourge, will receive but few lashes. To whomsoever much has been given, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been entrusted, of him a larger amount will be demanded. I came to throw fire upon the earth, and what is my desire? Oh, that it were even now kindled! But I have a baptism to undergo, and how am I pent up till it is accomplished? Do you suppose that I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you that I came to bring dissension. For from this time there will be in one house five persons split into parties. Three will form a party against two, and two will form a party against three. Father against son, and son against father. Mother attacking daughter, and daughter her mother. Mother-in-law her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law her mother-in-law. Then he said to the people also, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, There is to be a shower, and it comes to pass. And when you see a south wind blowing, you say, It will be burning hot, and it comes to pass. <laughs> Vain pretenders! You know how to read the aspect of earth and sky. How is it you cannot read this present time? Why, too, do you not of yourselves arrive at just conclusions? For when, with your opponent, you are going before the magistrate, on the way take pains to get out of his power, for fear that, if he should drag you before the judge, the judge may hand you over to the officer of the court, and the officer lodge you in prison. Never, I tell you, will you get free till you have paid the last farthing. The End of chapters 9 through 12 of the Gospel according to Luke from the New Testament in Modern Speech, translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Recording by Mark Penfold.